explain to me what you were saying when you first got on. Gilbert Godfrey. I don't want to hear his mouth. Every oh, Gilbert Godfrey. Here, slap you. Don't have Gilbert Godfrey. He's the only on. guy in the world that thinks he's funny. All right, here he is. Gilbert, come on in. <laughs> here comes Gilbert Godfrey. All right, I want to hear his mouth so I could jump out the window. Right? He's coming in right now. Just for you. Just for you. He is. There he is. Just you don't you remember said... me, the fake Dennis Rodman? Yeah, yeah, I remember you. Yeah, you don't, you big Joe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Gilbert, you're a big Joe. Oh, yeah. Howard, why don't you give me a, why don't you give me a job in serious? Well, yeah, I'm hi, going. what's your name? Hey, Gilbert, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Gilbert, why are you going to die already, Gilbert? Seriously. <laughs> Gilbert, when are you going to die already? Yeah, Do you ever I don't know. No, no, no. Seriously. Everyone wants to know when you'll die. Yeah, that, that... Hey, and Howard, yeah. I forgot to tell you, uh... Elephant boy, I'm a professional wrestler. Yeah, but you're being silly. You're being silly now. Now you're talking about things you don't know about. Yeah, no way, no way that's happening. Yeah, you that know about Gilbert, but you don't know that. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Gilbert? Gilbert, this is absolutely Gilbert's last appearance. Really? <laughs> and I'm only having him on because he's desperate to sell the DVD he put up, where he put up his own money. <laughs> and I feel bad for him. He finally got around to making a product. That he could sell on this show. How long has he been doing this show? And, and 27 years. <laughs> Finally. He now he wakes up. Now he wakes up. <laughs> Good. Way to go. We're leaving. No, but 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 I do have a spot on the Wise Guy show. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll be flying off the shelf. That's killer. You yes. know. I, I love that um, Gilbert's really moving into the new century and everything. Every time I look at his website, he's added a new feature. Oh, no. So the current feature is sign up for the Gilbert Fan Club. And I'm just wondering, if you sign up for the fan club, what do you get? Yeah, what is the Gilbert Fan Club? Seriously, do some promotion here. There's a Gilbert Godfrey, what, dot com? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No one tried to even steal your name. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was available? Yeah, it's funny. Gilbert said, I need GilbertGodfrey.com. Probably somebody bought that up early on. And they said, no, 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 that's very available. <laughs> You Nobody. Dot com, dot net, dot org. We've got it all. <laughs> Nobody thought to take that. It's amazing it was easy for you to get that. Anything, um, Gilbert, Gil, anything you want. <laughs> were you ever Gil as a kid? Or, Gil, like, did you ever try to be, make your name Gil cool? Gil Godfrey. Like Gil Godfrey? Uh, no. Did the kids ever call you Gil? I guess so, yeah. yeah Gilly? G. Godfrey. That's the closest I got to hip. G unit. Yeah. <laughs> How about Bert? Yes. Gilbert. It's the worst name in the world. Worse than Howard is Gilbert. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> did you ever, did, years ago, I think Piscopo was on this show and he called him Gilly. Yeah. That was annoying, Piscopo. He meant Gilly. Yeah, Gilly Godfrey. It was funny. <laughs> <laughs> but did you ever say to your mother, why Gilbert? Yeah, I don't know why she chose that. It, it's kind of like in movies, whenever they want to show a nerd character, even in the old movies, he would be called Gilbert. Gilbert. Yeah. And, and you grew into your name. Yes. You became, <laughs> you became exactly. a super nerd. Yes. Do you Maybe think that's why she did it. Right. Yes. <laughs> she wanted to raise a nerd. It was punishment. Were you a terrible disappointment to your family? <laughs> I know you dropped out of high school, and, uh, and physically you're not... Yeah, appealing. I mean, did they? Did your but, did your family dislike you? But other than that, I got everything going for me. Does your father put his arm around you and say, "Here's a chip off the old block"? Yeah. No. <laughs> Can I, I, I never hear any reference to your father. Is he yes. alive still? Oh no. No, he no. died. No, no. Was he, that hard for you when he passed on? Yeah, he he he, he hung himself when I was born. Oh. Did, he, yes. did your father committed suicide? No. There's very little reference to your father. Yes. I know I met your mother. Yes. There's no reference. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was, was there a divorce in the family? Is that what happened? Uh, no. no. He no. was there. Yes. He was there through your formative years? Yes, believe it or <laughs> was not. Was he a big influence on you? <laughs> Did he put his arm around you and say, Gilbert, I want to teach you everything oh, I yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, teach me to hit the ball around yeah. the arm. Was there any kind of <laughs> yes. interplay between you and your father, or was he a distant, cold man? Uh, well, everyone was to me. Right. Everyone, everyone was cold, was yeah, even your mother. <laughs> You were you were like a wolf. Yes. But did you? But seriously, was there something? Uh, what did your father do for a living? I uh, worked in a hardware store. In a hardware store. Yes. So you must have been very proud of his accomplishment. Yes. <laughs> he didn't even own the hardware store. He just worked. In oh it. no, no, he he owned it. Oh, was yeah. there, were there peculiar okay. things about your father? Was he was he a gay man trying to become straight <laughs> or anything like that? 
<laughs> Anything that would lead to this kind of humor. Yeah, was, there, was he a funny man? I mean, was he kind to you? <clears throat> <laughs> was he was he kind to you? I guess. Yeah. yeah. Do you, you don't yeah. remember? Yes. Do you yeah. remember his name, his first name? Uh, yeah, yeah. You don't recall? Yeah, I don't recall. <laughs> was he? Were you Gilbert Jr.? Yeah. <laughs> Howard, I would, that, like, I would like to know, like, how old was Gilbert when your dad passed away? Were you an older gentleman, or were you like a young kid? Oh, I was uh, about nineteen. Nineteen. Oh. Yeah. Was it a painful yeah. time for you? <laughs> you Introspection that occurred. <laughs> At nineteen, you became the man of the family. Right. You became the man of the family. Yeah. Can't yeah. you tell by the way I act how I carry myself? Had you been in touch with him uh, when he died, or were you estranged? What you mean, like uh, by through psychics? Yeah, no, no. I mean, did you call him? Was he someone that you that could, I call John Edwards? You were probably at that point trying to become a stand-up comedian, and you were on the road. You were you were dropped out of high school. You felt that you could become a comic. Did your father say, "Schmuck, what are you doing?" Exactly. Or, he did. Yes. He was not supportive of yeah. this decision. And he never got to see your success. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get some sad music playing here? Wow. And did he try to get you to go into the hardware business with him? <laughs> or he didn't want you? <laughs> I would have been more successful there. So he never he never even offered you a, a job in hardware? No. No. You never went to the store as a kid to work I, with you? Uh, yes, there? yes. So how long did yeah. that last? Uh, not long. Right. And he never said to you, son... Sometime in the future, I would like you to yeah. take over the family business. Yeah. Son, this is a nail. I like you to learn how to sell it. Was, were you a disappointment to your father? Honestly, being serious. I know you would be a disappointment to me if you were yeah. my son. I would be horrified. I mean, really. What do you do? How yeah. do you come back yeah. from this? You, you'd have to be. Yes. But um, are you good with tools? Do you, did you learn? Did you pick up things no, from your father? No, no. He was good with tools. Right. I, I can't do a thing. Do you know what a needle nose pliers is? <laughs> or would that be foreign to you? Is that like a Jew reference? Yes. Yeah. Did you cry when your father died? <laughs> Did you oh, still see? No. <laughs> Did you laugh? I mean, what was, when you showed up at the funeral, were you asked as a, as the man of the family now to make a speech about your dad? Oh no, no, no one asked you to talk. Yeah, no, even back then. No. Would you e have even at a funeral? I wasn't asked to speak. But would you have been able to actually give a speech about your father? Or would you have done stand up if you had sta stood up at his funeral? Uh, yeah, I'd probably do a uh, uh, same uh, few minutes I've been doing now. <laughs> you do yeah. that. Yeah, same act, the Hitler yeah, routine, yeah, exactly. and that. Kind of <laughs> You would have gotten yeah. up and done a Hitler routine yes. at your father's yeah. funeral. Yeah. <laughs> Howard, it sounds, yeah. it sounds like even at 19 they knew like to not to bother to ask Gilbert to do anything. Yes. <laughs> so you were a very awkward uh, gentleman. Exactly. You, there was no difference between the Gilbert now and the Gilbert then. Uh, pretty much, but, yeah. And was was there ever a time that, your da that you can remember that your dad put his arm around you <laughs> and gave you some piece of advice that, that stuck with you? Is there anything like that? I don't remember. Right. Really? Was there ever yeah. a kind word said to you from your father? A I, word of encouragement? I guess somewhere along the way. So what is yes. your fondest memory of yes. your father? <laughs> do you crave a father? Do you do you feel you yes. are you bitter and angry that you missed out on the love of a father? <laughs> Did he hit you? Ah, uh, no. Did he honest. talk to you? I guess I guess he should have given me a beating. But did yeah. he talk to you? I mean, when you said, Dad, I'm dropping out of school, did he say anything? This is like one of those bad cable shows. <laughs> Isn't it true you cried more when Roddy Dangerfield died than your own father? <laughs> But there was no sexual when, abuse, was when, there? Your father didn't pull your pants down and try to diddle you. Not every week. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so this is a, a, a troubled... Just, just the Jewish holidays. So we're looking at a troubled, tortured yes. man. <laughs> Who had a little time for his son. Yes. Right. <laughs> his troubled, tortured son. Yes. <laughs> Something you want to say, Fa Fa Fo Fi? Yeah. I see you gearing up. I'll wait till uh, he's done, and then I'll give you what I have for for Gilbert. What do you have? Uh -oh. We have, uh, you know, some of Gilbert's greatest moments on the show. You can't let Gilbert say goodbye without some of his greatest moments. Ah, let's remember the contributions this gentleman made. And let's yes. remind people that there's a lot at stake for Gilbert. This is his final appearance, and he needs you to buy his new DVD. Have you sold a lot of copies? Ah, uh, yeah. Believe it, I'm, I'm all here. What is he I doing? Yes. <laughs> Ah, here it is. What, do you, what is the problem over there? No, I got all wrapped up in these wires. 
Is it the wires or, or this this attempt to? You know what? It's funny. Gilbert sat down time. and somehow managed to get completely. <laughs> yes. And it's all he's been doing is untangling wires since he sat down. Yeah, you're very annoying. <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried's new DVD, Gilbert Gottfried Dirty Jokes, available in stores now. Wow, in actual stores. So From this is not his act. This is Gilbert. This is doing just me dirty doing jokes. extremely dirty jokes. He does oh, a series of dirty jokes. And for more information, go to GilbertGottfried.com, where we understand there is a new feature, the Gilbert Gottfried Fan Club. Now, yes. has anybody joined? Uh, yes. How many? Be honest. More than uh, two? Yeah. <laughs> How would there be a Gilbert Gottfried fan? What premiums would I get being a Gilbert Gottfried fan member? Uh, absolutely none. Do you write emails yeah. to people? Do you, do you oh, per- yes. Occasionally, there's an email. There was an email? Yeah. Or is there a newsletter of some kind to inform people? No, no nothing that I have no. to spend a dime on. What do your fans get? For As joining the fan club? Right. I uh, uh, sense that they've wasted their time joining my <laughs> fan club. So, does, does, the, does the website give any indication that no, there's something... No, you, you need to put in your name and your email address, and my guess would be that when Gilbert does an appearance to sell something, they'll tell you where mm-hmm. it is. Well, how is uh, and, and does it cost to join the fan club? No. I, I should charge. Do you share your recipe for Kugel? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kasha Varnishka. And any any recipe you want. Is there any Gilbert news they might get? Uh, okay. No. Do you see what my life is? Gilbert yeah. news. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gilbert we just, news. We just got the news that he had a father. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know... <laughs> you get more Gilbert news here. Gilbert will be at Caroline's on Broadway in Manhattan December 22nd through the 24th. For tickets and reservations, you call 212-757-4100. Well, I'm excited to take a look at the Gilbert Gottfried highlights, if you will. Yeah. Some of these need yeah. setup, Howard, if I could help you with some of them. Well, let's go to the Seinfeld Jr. Okay. routine. And by the way, many of Gilbert's past appearances can no longer be played in their entirety because of the filth. Right. Gilbert, Gilbert was dirty. Did. And when Gilbert is dirty, it's so funny. And that's my point. Yeah. Um, why I can't play you this stuff is beyond comprehension. We should have fought the FCC. The industry should have fought the FCC. For Gilbert's material to be hacked up like this. An artist such as Gilbert yeah. Gottfried. For an artist. <laughs> it's like a Van Gogh with a big magic marker that's cross right. across yeah. it. Yeah. But seriously, uh, we've had to edit some of this stuff. But yes. uh, nevertheless, the, the, the kind of the feel comes through. And... And I invite you, of course, in the future on my show, where you can really let loose with your filth. Uh-oh. Yes. <laughs> your filthy, fact, dirty filth. In fact, one of those we may not even be able to play that. I'm thinking about it. But we'll talk about it in a minute. Oh, which ones? Well, yeah. th- okay, so the first one is, first of all, Gilbert's probably one of my favorite guests on the show o- over all the years. I think he's amazing. I agree. Um, Jerry Seinfeld was supposed to come in and call the show or something like that, and he never called in, and you and Gilbert called his answering machine and filled it up for 28 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a little piece of the time Gilbert and I filled up Jerry Seinfeld's answering machine. For real, because I had his number. Yeah. Hey, Jerry, it's Howard Stern. You're supposed to be on the air with us. I mean, hey. I mean, certain things like this are just not right. I mean, you say, I mean, what type of a person are you that you say you're going to be on the air? And then you're not. Who are these people? We have Jerry Seinfeld Jr. here, just because you're not here. Jerry Seinfeld Jr. Um... Well, it happened years ago. You see, my father was used to travel, and he would have sex with these waitresses. Right. Now, one of them he had sex with, and then he left. I see. Now, what she about... got pregnant, and he left town, and then I was born. We were there for you when, you know, things weren't all that great. Leno was doing The Tonight Show. Your show was just a summer special. Can I interject a funny Leno story? Yeah, go ahead. One time, I was sitting with Jay, who's my best friend, Jay. <laughs> yeah, your best friend. Jay's wife, uh, Mavis, Mavis yeah. old black Mavis. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Jay's yeah. wife, old black Mavis, came yes, in, yes. and she said, yo, Jay, because she's old black Mavis, yes. she said about some comic who actually was taking time off right. from doing a club. Right. Well, I've never heard something so funny in my life. <laughs> Me and Jay thought we'd never be able to catch our breath after that. In other words, you can't understand why comics would take a vacation. They took a vacation. <laughs> Howard, are you listening to me? This is a comic. He took... A vacation. All right. He now. was going to Europe when he could have worked the club. He could have been doing giggles. Yeah. And instead, who would want to take a vacation from something so great as stand-up comedy? <laughs> he went off to some place like Florence or some other godforsaken place. So you and Jay sit around just laughing at other comics because they actually go someplace. Yes. Yeah, okay. Right.
<sighs> that is such a. Uh, I got to say something, Gilbert. <laughs> and you can break character. It, <laughs> that is such a brilliant observation. I must have read at the height of Seinfeld 50 billion articles that Jerry and Jay Leno sit around and talk about how they don't take vacation because they love stand-up so much. And everyone knows every stand-up comic hates, hates their job. Yeah. Yeah. It's horrible. <laughs> You'd rather be in a... I mean, poor Artie can't stop drinking from it. <laughs> <laughs> but those guys love to brag how much they love it, yeah. and it's so easy for them. Well, it's and, like they have it together. They're, they're yeah. better than us somehow. You know, Howard, uh, Jerry was still talking to us back then, and I remember he called us like a couple of weeks later and said that he was in an airport in Phoenix, and he accessed his machine, and it said one message. <laughs> he said he sat at a payphone. He sat at a payphone in Phoenix, listening to this for 28 minutes, right. laughing his ass off. And the idea that it's going into his answering machine is it makes it even funnier. You know, he's a big uh, Gilbert fan. Is Wendy the retard, and she wants to say something to him. Go ahead, Wendy. Uh, cover free. Um. I bought one of your bootlegged movie and and I watched it. It sucks big time. <laughs> what? You bought, you bought a bootleg copy of Gilbert's movie? Yes. Or his new DVD? Gilbert Gottfried dirty I, jokes. I I bought one of his movies and it sucks. All right. What was the name of it? It was bootlegged. Bootlegged. Boot you remember that? Oh, I remember that. Would you, movie. Wendy? Though you would, you would you make love to Gilbert if he wanted you? Yes. You would. <laughs> yes, I would. You little star See? effer. And, <laughs> and isn't it true, Gilbert Gottfried, one night at a party, raped you? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he overpowered you. Yes. And then he what? Ripped off your bra. Yes. And your panties. Yes. And Gilbert's dead father raped you, right? Yes. Yes. It was a double team from Gilbert and his dead father. Yes. Yes. And you were quite upset. Yes. Yes. Would it be weird to go out with someone famous? Yes. I was talking to Gilbert. Oh. But uh, Have after we ever Gilbert... gotten into S and M together? After Gilbert's father and Gilbert <laughs> raped you, didn't you yell at them? Yes. Was there golden showers involved? Yes. 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 Oh, that's disgusting. A poor retarded you be girl. Ashamed of yourself. Gilbert. Was the sex horrible with Gilbert? Yes. Oh. <laughs> but the reason uh... you filed no charges is because you barely felt anything. Yes. <laughs> you better say that. On, you better. Did Gilbert finish the love act very quickly? <laughs> Isn't it true that Gilbert Gottfried took his father's dead corpse and yeah. raped you and raped you with it? Yeah. Yes. That was an immediate yes. Yes. You didn't even have to finish it. Yes. <laughs> and um and after Gilbert Gottfried's father and Gilbert Gottfried had sex with you, isn't it true Gilbert Gottfried's father cried because his son is Gilbert? Yeah. Yes. All right, thank you. It's my uncle. Yeah. All right. Is well, it then, uh, 20 inches long? Yes. <laughs> are right. you calling to tell us you're pregnant with Gilbert's baby? Yes. Yes. And what are you going to name the baby? <laughs> Gilbert Jr. Gilbert <laughs> Jr. <laughs> <laughs> but will you use your last name, The Retard? Gilbert yes. The Retard, yes. Did, did I give you any sexually transmitted diseases? Yes. <laughs> Was it herpes? Yes. And AIDS? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Was it syphilis? Yes. <laughs> and Chlamydia. gonorrhea? Yes. Yes. Crabs? Yes. <laughs> he had them all? He gave me the retarded clap. <laughs> Isn't it true you got worms after you were with Gilbert? Yes. Yes. All right, Wendy, I love you, and I'll see you on the 16th. I, I love you, Sarah, and I'll see you on the 16th. Yes, thank you. Uh, and the 16th, Wendy. Yeah, the 16th. <laughs> well, uh, I'm glad she hung up. I was going to ask her, would you rather be retarded or Gilbert Gottfried? <laughs> I think we know the answer to that one. By the way, on the last show, I'll be handing out money. You might want to be in the crowd, oh, okay. Gilbert. <laughs> Courtesy of Spike TV's Video Game Awards 2005, airing this Saturday, December 10th at 9 p.m., only on Spike TV. Do you want uh, um, any more Gilbert moments? Let's, uh, as we go into commercial, let's remember another great Gilbert moment.
from the uh, show history. Right. And this, this is the reason why Dennis Miller doesn't speak to us anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great moment. He really he stopped speaking to us right after this. He hated us so much after Gilbert's appearance. Yeah. So uh, Dennis Miller calls in, and Gilbert's sitting here. And Dennis Miller innocently mentions that his 22-month-old son, Holden... I think Dennis was on the phone. He was on the yeah. phone. Yes. And his, 20, his 22-month-old son, Holden, was there, and that just set Gilbert off into weird places. Hey, Jerry, it's Howard Stern. Well, that's the Jerry thing. For some reason, it's not advancing. There's my son, Holden. Holden. It's, it's Let me un- talk to Holden. It's Uncle Howie. Let me How old is Holden? How old is Holden? He's 22 months. Holden? <laughs> This is Uncle Howard. Holden, what are you wearing? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what happened Gilbert to Holden? just asked my son what he's wearing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Gilbert's, Gilbert's got a lot of emotional problems. <laughs> Holden, how, how big are your testicles? <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert's like, Holden, can you send me a Polaroid of yourself? Oh. Put your hand inside your diaper and rub. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert's a little pervert. What a Holden, sicko. Holden, I want you to unpin your diaper, okay? <laughs> <laughs> just just reach around All and right. slowly All unpin. All right. Come on, Gilbert. All righty. All right. It's oh, here he's talking now. All right, let me rap to him. Gilbert, you be quiet. Yeah, no. I have to. Raise your bug up there. There's a spire. Keep oh. talking. <laughs> Holden, this is Uncle Howard. Uh, talk slowly, Holden. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert, shut up. <laughs> you know what he just said to me? Something about a spider. No, yeah, but his first words were he wanted me to put a peace bond on Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dennis, I'll let you go. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, well, his bye-bye. wife, I was doing. Uh, yeah. His wife. <sighs> oh, hold no, hold no. <laughs> no I'm talking about his wife. <laughs> Gilbert's still on hold. He's fixated on. I'd holding. like to be holding, holding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know you like young boys. Holden, you're so natural. Oh, yes. You're so natural, so uninhibited. Your skin is so pink. (laughs) (laughs) Would would, would you like a spanking, Holden? (laughs) You're in bed. When Gilbert was in the hospital, he'd slip into one of those doctor uniforms and go to the pediatric (laughs) ward. Hello, boys. Uncle Gilbert. (laughs) Now, just take a deep breath. This won't hurt a bit. Short, <laughs> short, shallow breaths. Uh, cough. Yes, here, bounce up and down on my lap. That's it. You're a nice boy, Dennis Miller's son. Yeah. Here, why don't you climb up my leg like you always do? <laughs> <laughs> climb up my leg and slide down. <laughs> Touch Uncle Gilbert's candy cane. <laughs> Gilbert, you were in a very dark place that day. Is that based on your real life? Do you ever feel attracted to young children? Uh, all the time, yes. All the time. Yes. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, that was the last time we ever heard from Dennis Miller. Yeah. I was going to say, it was right. worth losing Dennis Miller. Just for that. <laughs> he tolerated the stuff he could hear, but once he heard the uh, what happened after he hung up with the phone, that was it. All right. We're going to take a break. And uh, when we come back... Um, we can hear uh, Gilbert ask Abe Hirschfeld to tell a joke 11,000 times. That is my favorite Gilbert <laughs> yes. moment. That and Dracula Godfrey, quite uh, frankly. Well, my I favorite. like the rabbi, too. And the Pope. Yeah, so you know what I didn't even get to, too? I like when Gilbert um, was arguing with Amy Heckerling's... Oh, yes. That's great. The nanny. Jew- Jewish nanny. Do you have that? I do have a yes. small piece yes. of it. Gilbert Godfrey's new DVD, Gilbert Godfrey Dirty Jokes, available in stores and also on GilbertGodfrey.com. We'll be back right after these words. After today, Gilbert Gottfried with us. Got that new DVD everyone is talking about and <laughs> attempting to buy for Christmas. Gilbert Gottfried's Dirty Jokes, available in stores now. For more information, go to... That's right. Listen to the fans. They're going wild for it. All right. For more information, go to GilbertGottfried.com and Gilbert at Caroline's on Broadway in Manhattan, December 22nd through the 24th. Uh, 212-757-4100 for ticket reservation. Gilbert out on the road uh, promoting this new DVD. He's such a, a showman. Oh. He believes in this product so much. I understand you'll be on The View very soon. Oh, and I'll be at uh, Tower uh, in Lincoln Center. Tower Records. When? when will you be there? Tomorrow. All right. And what time do you know? I think starting at 5. You don't know? Yeah. It's <laughs> such think, a busy yeah. schedule you don't yeah, know. Yeah, I've got so much to do. <laughs> You're so busy. That yeah, I'll be signing DVDs at uh, Tower. Do you anticipate tomorrow. a big crowd? <laughs> <laughs>
if it's five people, I'll consider it a success. All right. So no one is expecting anybody to show. <laughs> you know, as a tribute to Gilbert Robin, and we, we don't have much time this morning, but I, and this is a rather long clip, but maybe this is Gilbert's shining moment on the show. Okay. And since this material will be lost forever because certain corporate people don't want to give me permission to use it, we listen to it one last time. It's when Gilbert Gottfried was on our show, and Abe Hirschfeld, who recently died, called in. And Abe Hirschfeld wanted to speak to us. He was calling from jail, I believe. Yes. yes. And Gilbert <laughs> saw it as an opportunity for comedy. <laughs> to, to ridicule. To abuse a senile yes. old man. An to old man and abuse. in his final years of life. Gilbert chose to waste this man's time. A few what? moments left, and Gilbert wastes them this way. He was a criminal, this guy, though. I mean, come on. Oh, wrong one again. Wrong one again? No. No, I'm not doing very well today, am I? In fact, I removed the Gilbert CD. <laughs> <laughs> what a pro I am. <laughs> we go for the final time. Gilbert Gottfried. I will tell you. Is this, is this the beginning? I guess so. so. I will tell you how to have a good, happy marriage. All right. You know, this 10-year-old boy says to his mother, <laughs> how old are you? And she says it's not polite to ask a lady her age. <laughs> Next day, he says, how much do you weigh? And she says it's not polite to ask. Next day, he says, why are you divorced? <laughs> And she says, you're too young, you'll get older, we'll discuss it. A few days later, the boys are together, and he says, boys, I found my mother's driver's license, and it gives me all the answers. It says that she's, that she's 35 years old, she weighs 120 pounds, and in sex, she got an F. And that's the main cause of all divorces. How old was the boy? <laughs> the old boy was 10 years old. He's 10, and how old is yeah. his friend? You know, yeah. the, the these... friends were the same age. Wait a second. The, the mics aren't working at all here. Can you just do that again? Yes. Yeah. The 10 year old boy is asking his mother, How old are you? And she says, It's not polite to ask. Next day, he says, How much do you weigh? And she says, Also, it's not polite to ask. Next day, he says, Why are you How many wrong? times can you get him to say this? He says, You're too young. You'll get older. We'll discuss it. A few days later, the boys are together. And he says, Boys, I found my mother's driver's license. And it gives me all the answers. It says that she's 35 years old. She weighs 120 pounds. And in fact, she got an F. And that is a major issue in marriages. When the wife has a... Well, I'm going to ask you, but I don't understand. Wait, 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 let me... Because if you have a good night... And you can tell me screwed up, but I'm going to If you have a good night, then you have a good day. But... If you have a bad day and then a good night, everything straightens but out. But how old was the mother? The mother was 35 years old. That part and got she weighed 120 pounds. Yeah, that part got edited out. Right. See, and you I, know the other most important issue. No, wait, wait, Abe. They, I, I don't know what the hell is wrong with the, how they're recording stuff here, but I, I, we didn't get any of that. Oh, you wanted the game? Yes, okay. yeah, please. The joke. Yes, okay. the joke. Yes. You know, this 10-year-old ten ten boy says to his mother, how old are you? And she says it's not polite to ask a lady her age. Next day he says, how much do you weigh? And she says the same, it's not polite to ask. Next day he says, mother, why are you divorced? And she says, you see, young, you get older, we discuss it. A few days later, the boys are together. She says, boys, I found my mother's driver's license, and it gives me all the answers. She says that she's 35 years old, she weighs 120 pounds, mm. and in fact, should ask him for money, like, like, like those little biddies who and, the and, five and pounds. the women who have in sex an A or a B, they never get divorced. How could this guy be a multi-millionaire? <laughs> he obviously didn't make it yet. Of it. Hmm. So, that, that is one of the issues. But the other major issue that <laughs> bothers our nation <laughs> more than anything 
Do you want to make him do it again? Yeah. Well, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. Open the butcher shop, more butcher shops, then he bought the slaughterhouse, yeah. more slaughterhouse. I, I want to know what the hell is going on here. Why didn't we hear any of that? Well, Why sorry, we Abe, if, Abe, if I'm yelling at me, people here. If you let me we, finish, you'll yeah, hear No, we didn't hear any of that story. No, no story that you hear from me, you have from anybody. Because no, no, I could you tell us? Up. We want to hear the story, and the mics keep going in and out. It's our new producer. Yeah. So what happened? Could you just tell the story about the boy and, and the woman? Again? Yes, please. Yes, this 10-year-old boy... <laughs> Asks his mother, how old are you? And she says it's not polite to ask a lady her age. Next day, he says, how much do you weigh? And she gives the same answer. And the next day, he says, why are you divorced? And she says, you're too young. You'll get older. We'll discuss it. A few days later, the boys are together. And he says, boys, I found my mother's driver's license. And it gives me all the answers. She says that she's 35 years old. She weighs 120 pounds. And in sex, I don't get it. She got an F. No, an F and in with sex. The, with an F in sex, they automatically get divorced. But those women I'm gonna who go are through the I'm gonna, an A or B in sex, I want to break down the joke. Forever. It kind of grows on you. Yeah. So now it's the other issue which which bothers us a lot. You um you wrote that joke. I made up every joke that Fabulous. you hear. You never I didn't have even hear it unless you hear it from me, and I have hundreds of them. You know, uh, is the mother divorced? <laughs> yes, <laughs> because she has in sex an F. An F. Oh, but so. doesn't he realize that's female? I beg your pardon? The, the F, isn't that for female? The yeah, F is for female. I That's see, right. I see, I you see. Can only you can get, get an you M or an F, yeah. So what if she'd gotten an M? She'd be a man. If she got that M, she would be a man. man. Yeah. I, I, that, I, what I, said. that I didn't think of. Abe, I think the main problem here is we didn't hear all of the joke. That's why we're so confused. We get the first half, yeah. and then we don't get the second half. We started going in and out. I think we've got it fixed now. It's the submixer. And so, uh, should I repeat yes, it? Yes, please. One more time, please. Okay. This uh, this uh, <laughs> ten-year-old boy asks his mother, how old are you? I can't take and it. And she says it's not polite to ask a lady her age. <laughs> Next day, he says, how much do you weigh? And she says the same thing. It's not polite to ask. Next day, he uh... says, mother, why are you divorced? And I'd love to meet this guy. Young. You realize this guy used to go to dinners with like Robert Kennedy and he knows. Really? Yeah. Uh, now he's being dicked around by Gilbert. Yeah. <laughs> Robert Kennedy's there going, could you uh, tell me the uh, joke again? <laughs> hey, uh, Abe, you're such a great storyteller. Can you tell the one about the 10 year old boy? Well, Mr. Kennedy? Ah, uh, yeah, I lay so up gloriously when I hear your voice. <laughs> Wait, and okay. now you see the other issue is a much more interesting uh, one. We missed the end. end. Problem to oh, I'm sorry, we missed Abe. We missed the end. Open the butcher shop in uh, Chicago and more butcher Abe, shop. just the last two lines of the joke. We missed the end. Which line? The last two. From the previous joke? Yes. The, yes. The uh, previous. She's 35 years old. Yes. She weighs 120 pounds. 120. And in fact, she got an F. No, not that line. The line before. The line before that? Yes. The previous okay. line to that, and then do the rest. Okay. All yeah, right. Like, what was the third question? <laughs> right. All right. From the third question forward. Hey, it seems that you guys don't know what means in sex and F. <laughs> but unfortunately today, that's what's happening a lot. We're efforting with him. So uh, <laughs> the, the first line is, the boy is asking his mother, how old are you? And she says, it's not polite to ask a lady her age. So how does it start then off? Then he says, mother, how much do you weigh? And she but says, also, Abe, it's not polite to ask. How does the joke start off? The joke started yeah. off... That's a wonderful question. The yeah. joke started off when I was in jail. No, no. How does and the there joke? Were many, many. <laughs> uh, we want to record it this time. Right. Could you say it? What should I say? Well, we want the joke again, but this time we want to record it and we'll play it in a future show. Okay. Yes. You know this. Uh, this ten-year-old boy asked his mother, "How old are you?" 
And Why did you do that? Such a lie to ask a lady her age. <laughs> Next day she says, Mother, how much do you weigh? And she also says it's not polite to ask a lady her weight. Next day he says, and why are you divorced, mother? And she says, you're too young, you'll get older. Why is he calling cousins. in anyway? Do we ever find out? Today they said the boys are together. No problem, he I, I want to move ahead. I found my He's mother doing his aid driver's material. license. <laughs> And it gives me all the answers. I wish the boy was nine. <laughs> that she's 35 oh, years old. She weighs 120 nine. pounds. <laughs> and instead, she got an ass. <laughs> so that's natural that it leads to a divorce. <laughs> that's one of the best moments ever on radio. I don't care. Oh, man. It's a hell of a joke, though. That's worth it. Unfortunately, worth it. we have to yeah. give that up. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? Because that's also that, that was a great moment, Gilbert. <laughs> and you know, we did it again to him like a year later. I know. He was really almost dying then. <laughs> Do you ever tell that joke in your act? <laughs> <laughs> a little boy. She's <laughs> <laughs> mother. Did anybody ever listen to the actual joke? Like, what is it? A funny joke? What is the joke? <laughs> the joke. The joke is a little boy asks his mother how old she is. How much, she play it again? How much she weighs? <laughs> yeah, I didn't even pay attention. And what about sex? And she tells she shouldn't ask that, but he looks at her license. He, see, he sees how old she is, sees how much she weighs, and in, in sex he sees she got an F. Oh, she got an F in sex. That took days to tell that joke. All right, tell it again. I want to record it. <laughs> Gilbert has that on his uh, DVD. Oh, yeah. So can I give you the setup on this one, Howard? Uh, this is it, because then i got to do news. Yeah. I'm run and i gotta, I, I got to, again, 57 hours of promotion. All right, so this woman calls us at like 6.15 in the morning, and she right. says she's Amy Heckerling's nanny. And <laughs> Amy she... Heckerling is a famous film director who worked with Gilbert. And, um, and this woman, the nanny, hates Gilbert, because <laughs> Gilbert went to go have dinner at Amy Heckerling's one night, and as the woman says, Gilbert was way too cheap to take a cab, so Amy sent the nanny to pick, her, pick Gilbert up at the airport. As soon as Gilbert finds out that she's Jewish and her parents uh, were in the Holocaust, he starts in on her. Yeah. It's like right away, Gilbert, it's like, you, you, I know what she was trying to do. She's gone, oh, I'm Jewish, I'm from Germany, my father was in the concentration camp, you better like me. No, yes. both of my parents were in the concentration camp. My father lost like 30 people in the camp, 80 pounds. Yeah, but what Gilbert, do you want from Gilbert? He is so weight? cheap. He <laughs> wants to come to Amy for a free meal. Shame on you, Gilbert. You can't even pay for your own meal. <laughs> Can you tell me again how your father lost so much weight? Yes, yeah, he's the old, same old Joe. Nobody's buying it. People, Jewish people will not come to your concerts anymore. I swear. <laughs> your career is over, Gilbert. You can sue me. I don't give a damn. You can sue me, I have witnesses. I wanted to kill myself after what you told me. Oh. Now, what happened? You tried to kill yourself? I know. I was at home. I was like shaking. I had like a, a breakdown. And I, I said to Amy, if this guy ever comes to our house, to your house again, I'm quitting my job. Well, you can't decide what Gilbert's going to be funny about. That's what Gil that's what's great yeah, about Gilbert. Yeah, that's why he's an artist. He he's, has to do yeah. what he feels. Right, aren't you? <laughs> And, and you know what happened? Howard, the only reason Gilbert ate that much that day is because Holocaust stories make him hungry. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who made him hungry. They were not in Auschwitz, you idiot. <laughs> My father was in Dachau. Well, well, and and I want to see you weighing 80, 80 pounds. He does. Yeah. <laughs> hey, in that case, I apologize. They had the wrong camp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I cannot believe it. I'm sorry. Was it your boy guy? Yeah. I really this feel bad now. What? What? Was it Treblinka? I really feel bad now. Treblinka, you idiot. You can't even pronounce it right. Oh, wait a minute. I'm still trying to guess. Uh, he wasn't. He, I said Dachau, you stupid fool. Oh, I I'm sorry. Dachau. I always get those camps wrong. Would you forgive me for getting the camps wrong? <laughs> oh, Gilbert. Uh, if I could be a little bit serious, thank you for all the great years of comedy that you provided on this show. And yes, you are very polarizing. Many fans hate you, despise you, you know, never want to see you again, and so many love you. And isn't that true of all great performers? <laughs> to be despised. To be hated. Alone. I have no home. <laughs> hated. Despised. <laughs> you're probably the one guest that makes me laugh the hardest yeah. you know you're right though some of my favorite moments i couldn't play and i'll just throw this one out there i could tell you what what the topic was but i can't get into it 
Gilbert spent a half an hour one day talking about Robin's big black kluge. Right. right. <laughs> can't, go, oh, can't play that one. The kluge. Oh, the kluge. <laughs> you were in love with her kluge. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gilbert Gottfried's new DV, DVD, Dirty Jokes, available in stores now, and uh, Gilbert of Caroline's and GilbertGottfried.com. And He'll be there uh, December 22nd through the 24th, and tonight he's signing his fabulous... Oh, no, tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> tomorrow. 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 Tower. He'll be signing. See what you gotta do is show up with <laughs> <laughs> All right, Robin, what's in the news? Oh, we're going right into it? I, I believe so. Robin Tudors, Robin Tudors, Robin Tudors, Robin Tudors. She's got big ones. They be such fun. All right, that's a nice song. Why won't you call them now? what you got to do is read the news now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading about Jessica Simpson's uh, personal assistant in the paper today. Yes, uh, I'm so into celebrity gossip. I love that Nick and Jessica are getting a divorce. I like that the, the, the that Nick and Jessica are fighting over their assistant. Each one wants to bring her with them. Yes, and the assistant seems to be siding with Nick, according to Lowdown. Well, they say that well, she has been scandal. overheard <laughs> bad-mouthing Jessica and saying that she cheated yes. on Nick in the relationship. There seems to be some implication that either Johnny Knoxville or Bam or one of these guys got in her pants. Several. They're Several. saying Johnny Knoxville and <laughs> Bam. Was it a gangbang? even... Uh, Adam uh, Levine, the uh, front man for Maroon 5, might have gotten there, too. Sounds like everyone but Abe Hirschfeld has been <laughs> in on the <laughs> and, and, and then, was her father involved? Oh, no, that come was on. Sure. That's a terrible taste. But my point yeah. is, did, <laughs> Shame on you. did that, Jessica Simpson remain a virgin until she got married? Yes. She's and now yeah. look at her. She's making up for lost time. No well, wonder this has happened. The, the, the oh, levy oh, broke, oh, so to speak. Oh, yeah. Might as well go have a party. <laughs> So that, you know, whole waiting around, to, you know, to get married thing is not necessarily going to mean your uh, marriage is going to last forever. I think what Gilbert meant is, isn't the father involved in her career heavily? And, uh, you oh, know, you right. know. Yeah, and the father one time said, you know, something like, she's a hot broad with, and when she's got those big breasts. Yes. Some and really weird. He's uh, a former minister. You're yes, right. He yeah. should say, look, I can't help it if she's got big boobs and yeah. uh, she looks good. If you had a daughter, I would imagine you would speak about her that way. Oh, yes. It's a daughter's press. <laughs> Anything else? So, anyway, that's the uh, Jessica Simpson story. I just thought it was interesting that Exciting. she was a virgin when she got married. Now everybody's saying she's sleeping with everyone. Well, I don't believe it. I don't either. i got to tell you, I look at pictures of her, and I can't think of a more beautiful, I mean, physically beautiful-looking woman right now. I mean, her, she's right up there in the top five, isn't yeah. she? But the problem is she's a moron, but who cares? If I was this guy, I'd stay with her and milk it for all it's worth. If she made $35 million last year, right? I'd stay until she can't earn any more. I mean, Gilbert, you would never leave a beautiful woman who made $35 million in a year, would you? Yeah, well, I think it's because his career is going so well. He has the, yeah, he, he has the bravery to leave. Yeah. Yes. It's a good time for him to leave because things are going so yeah, well Yeah, because everyone talks about Nick out of that relationship. Mm. Right. But it seems that she left Ooh. him, so, I mean, but he didn't take care of the relationship. So I guess uh, he's at a loss. But they did not have a prenup, so. I see. He <clears> should <throat> be in for half of last year's earnings anyway. They say that Brad Pitt is going to have to go through a lot to adopt Angelina Jolie's children. When you're married to a person and you have a stepfather adoption is one thing. But when you're a non-married person trying to adopt someone else's children they say you have to pay a lot more money you have to have um references you have to be investigated and then you also have to have in-home visits by a social worker to mm. evaluate you as a parent so he's going to go through all of that and they say the reason the two of them are doing this is because they probably don't want to get married i see they want to live together, and he wants to be the father to the children, but they both seem to think they've been unsuccessful at marriage before. Why try it again? How ironic that the two best-looking people in the world are not going to have their own child, and they're going to walk around with these Cambodian and African children. 
the rest of their life. What did you want to see the child of Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt? If, after all, isn't that the reason we enjoy them being together? Who knows that they're not going to have their own children? Did you, I, did I you feel, talk to them? I feel like they're going to continue along this route of, of taking <laughs> everyone in. No, they, they want to have lepers as children. <laughs> I think the little girl looks a little like Gilbert. <laughs> Honestly, sometimes. Uh, let's go to Luke. Luke, you're on the air. Hey, Howard, how you doing? Hey, Luke. I love you guys, man. I can't wait to see you the 16th. Come on down, man. We'll have a good time. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Orlando. I'm a I'm a college kid. I spent the last of my money to try to make it up there by myself on the 16th to hang out in Manhattan for the weekend. Well, good. We're going to hang out. And Gilbert, I'd also be honored if you'd stop by and address the crowd for a minute, give a little speech, maybe a farewell speech to the... It's the 16th? The 16th, if you're not too busy. Yes. <laughs> I, think I can't be, wait. I think the crowd can't would wait. like to see yes. you. After all, uh, Stained will play you out. They will actually uh, <laughs> perform. And uh, my parents will be giving a speech. And my sister. And, of course, you, Gilbert. And <laughs> yes, come and meet the family. So many I different can't people. Wait. I want my parents to meet you. <laughs> Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you there. We're going to have a, a fun time, we think. Uh, let's go to Zuzu. Uh, Zuzu, you're on the air. Hello. Hello, Zuzu. Good morning. Um, I'm on you. I'm on you sound like a very fan. hot young lady. <laughs> <laughs> are you? Uh, How old are you, honey? Um, I'm almost 12. Uh, oh. <laughs> I'll be 13 on uh, Friday the 13th. Oh, are, are you, you wearing? Little... Are you a little girl or boy? Boy. Yeah. When I was your age, before my voice changed, there was nothing more emasculating. And when I'd pick up the phone and my mother's name was Ray and her friends would go, Ray? <laughs> like, no, it's that Howard. happens to me all the time. Yeah, don't worry, your oh, voice will change. Soon you'll be mature like Gilbert. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. Zuzu, you're 12 years old and you're coming down on the 16th? Yeah. Isn't that great? What about yeah, we're going to try, for sure. Yep. He's going to try to take us, he's going to take me out of school daily so I can come up there. Come oh. up and say um, hi. Let me tell you something. All schools should be closed on the 16th for my last show. It's a, it's a hist It's really radio history, dare I say. Hey, I want to make a comment about comment about John Lennon. Go ahead. All right. Well, you had said something about John Lennon the other day. Well, I think that I personally think that he would not want him to be murdered, but I think he'd want rather him be have life in prison. Is that right? You think? Only. Well, let me tell you something. You're only 12. You don't know about these things. John Lennon would want this guy dead. You don't Trust think me. there's a, a pope in John Lennon we who know. would say, I forgive? When somebody shoots you dead, <laughs> you want that guy dead. Trust me. You'll see Zuzu. Yeah. All right, Zuzu. I'll see you on the 16th, pal. Um, My dad wants to say hi. All right. Hey, Alex. Hi, it's his father. <laughs> How you doing? You bringing young Zuzu with you? Yeah, Zivu. Yep, I'm Zivu. bringing him with me. He's been listening pretty diehard for the last year. I've been, I moved to North Hollywood from the Bay Area, and you know, I'm a single father, so every commute, every morning, Listen, he's listening. A... He's he's listening while we got my daughter in back with her headphones on and her DVD player. This is awkward. <laughs> uh, don't take it the wrong way. Gilbert wants to know what your son looks like. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. He's, uh, yeah, he looks like about a, he looks like a Japan animation cartoon, I would say. Oh. <laughs> Killed the mother. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, it's just you know she's trying to find herself. She lives in the Bay Area with, with her boyfriend. That's I, nice. They need they need they need more responsibility, so right. I took them upon myself. Uh, she's busy finding herself. Gilbert's too embarrassed to ask this, but is Zuzu uh, circumcised? Zivu is it's Zivu, Zivu. and it's, he's not circumcised. Oh, Gilbert, sorry. Uh, he's one of those Hollywood. That's enough. Oh God. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we're heading that way. We're coming for 16th. All right, we'll see you there, brother. Get away, man. Right. I wonder what Bye. he's going to do with the daughter that day. <laughs> I don't know. I wonder if Zivu has ever heard the Abe Hirschfeld joke. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to go on the Crack Whore View? We're doing a show called the Crack Whore View. Yes, and they're going to take guests? Well, yeah, because the view, the same day that we're running it, has on Gilbert. Oh, you're kidding. So we're trying to get the same guest for our crack horror view. Beautiful. So you have to go on the crack horror view. Yes. You have no choice. <laughs> I'm not hearing a commitment. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes. Good. In that case, I'll plug your DVD. Yes. <laughs> the new DVD, Dirty Jokes, available in stores now. Or go to GilbertGodfrey.com. What else is in the news? Um, 
I'm telling you, the best show in town right now is Saddam Hussein's trial. I don't know if you're following this, but Saddam and his brother, his uh, stepbrother, I think it is, are on trial right now in Iraq for war crimes and crimes against the people. Yes. And, you know, there's just constant things going on. Like the other day, they started the trial, they started the case, and all the lawyers got up and walked out. Now, how can they do that? So then, you know, Saddam started screaming. You know, the judge said, well, we'll give you court-appointed lawyers. And Saddam started screaming, you can't give me court-appointed lawyers. They're hired by the Americans. I don't want them. So now the trial is underway, and they have a number of um, witnesses who are, are sitting on the stand, and they are being covered up or hidden from the jury. And Well, actually, there is no jury. They're hidden from the judges, and they're hidden from the people in the courtroom as well as the defendants, but they are allowed to speak through... Um, you know, those things that mangle your voice so that their voices can't even be recognized. You mean one of these? Yes. Uh, uh, yes, Saddam uh, put electrodes on my testicles. Well, here is uh, somebody, I think it was a woman who was on the stand today. C3, you'll hear her in the background, and then you'll hear the interpreter saying what she's saying. C3. You hear that weird noise? What's that? Oh, no, I got rid of it. <clears throat> All right, this is a woman testifying... With some weird voice thing on. Yeah. And an interpreter telling us what is being said. Is that correct? Yes. All right. One of my relatives is deaf and dumb. They will take him out before the women. And they will play with his private parts. And women will cry. Gilbert's going to go over there and get tortured. That's like fun. Uh, also, this is uh, from the trial yesterday where um, they uh, said they did not appreciate, the judges were saying they did not appreciate what the defendants were doing to the witnesses. See one. They have been interrupted several times by the lawyers and the defendants, and they also abused them yesterday. And as you probably know, this is not allowed under the law. So they're trying to keep them under control and to keep them from abusing the witnesses. And yesterday, Saddam's brother spoke up. Uh, he's the half-brother of Saddam Hussein. Spoke up and said, look, you know, the, we're on trial here. These people shouldn't uh, take us so seriously. See, too. Mr. The Judge, we are educated people. We are uh, refined people. And he shouldn't really worry about us saying anything which is harmful or damaging or insulting. Hmm. So, I wish I spoke Iraqi so I didn't have to wait for the interpreter to tell me what's going on, but that trial continues in Iraq. A San Diego man has uh, spent more than two decades in prison for a murder he did not commit, and now he's looking for some payback. His name is Ken Marsh. He was released from prison in August of last year after an appeals court ruled he didn't kill his girlfriend's two-year-old son back in 1983. The 50, uh, not 15, but 50-year-old Marsh spent 21 years behind bars before being exonerated. Here he is talking about what Man. this has done to his life. He should get to kill someone. C4. They took my life away from me. How do I answer that? Was it hard? Hell yeah, it was hard. They took everything I loved from my, out of my life and, and left me with nothing but hatred. Put me in a place where there's nothing but hatred. Marsh mm. and his attorneys are currently in Sacramento meeting with the Victims' Compensation Government Claims Board this week. Part of the California Penal Code says anyone wrongly convicted should be awarded $100 a day for every day they're in prison. Gilbert, even someone as cold and removed as you has to be moved by a man who was falsely accused and put into prison for all those years. Well, for a hundred a day, I'd go to prison. Yeah. <laughs> you think this guy's a big fag because he's complaining? Yeah, he's got a hundred yeah. a day? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's a wuss. <laughs> oh, no sympathy coming no, from you're, that You're corner. a horrible human being. <laughs> wow. No, that's a really horrible story. Imagine you're in jail your whole life for something you're killing. Didn't do. First of all, it's a heinous crime, right. so you're going to be hated in jail. Horrible. And then you didn't even do it. Hmm. Well, we're going to take a break, Robin, and think about that. <laughs> I don't see what's so funny, young man. <laughs> Gilbert's laughing at all the uh, unwanted gay sex that guy had in prison. <laughs> and Gilbert will be at Caroline's on Broadway, Manhattan, December 22nd through the 24th. He does some excellent routines about. 
Hitler. <laughs> For ticket reservations, call 212-757-4100. Back in a flash. Oh, the Big Apple, New York City. Here they are. Oh. Get ready to rumble. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Good Gilbert dancing over there. Yeah. On the table. I'm homoerotic, man. All right. He's spinning around on his head. He um he break dances. <laughs> that piece of cardboard, that filthy piece of cardboard he dances on. <laughs> He's upgraded yeah. to linoleum. What are you talking about? Go to GilbertGottfried.com for more details on his big signing, oh. Tower Records, and his new DVD, Dirty Jokes. <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried, available at GilbertGottfried.com. Dang. <laughs> I'm a member of his fan club. Oh, yes. lucky yeah, you. Someone just told me that signing's Friday. I don't even know. That's Gilbert will be Friday. signing copies of his DVD Friday. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what Artie told you. Yeah. Do yeah. it on Friday. Yeah, yeah, everyone leaves the town on See, Friday. What, what you gotta do is uh, <laughs> go down on Friday. <laughs> Friday at 5 p.m. in Tower Records of Manhattan. Robin, go ahead, wrap it up. Because yes, unfortunately, I uh, <laughs> have some bad news. The U.S. military says two women suicide bombers have attacked the Baghdad Police Academy. Well, I that... told them what you have to do. Oh, is strap bombs, explosives for yourself. That's what I would do. At least... I would go into the police station with explosives, <laughs> and then I would uh, blow myself up, At least killing 20... myself and others. Yeah, 27 people are reported to have been killed, another 32 wounded. The military says the bombers walked into a classroom and detonated their bombs among the students. No U.S. forces were well, in see, the this way you academy. Kill the children as well as yourself. That's why you become a suicide bomber. An Iraqi militant group says it has kidnapped a U.S. security consultant. In a video aired on Al Jazeera television, the group threatens to kill the man in 48 hours unless the U.S. Don't say Al Jazeera television. Gilbert is looking for outlets to uh, promote his DVD. <laughs> He'll leave. He's got a development deal with them. We well, have Gilbert Gottfried on the show. Very, very funny, man. You have hours. a DVD coming out. Oh, very, very funny. Gilbert it's... Gottfried is on the show. Oh, Oh, very, very, very funny. <laughs> yeah. 48 hours is what the U.S. has to free all Iraqi prisoners in order to save that man's life. The video showed a blonde, western-looking man sitting down with his hands tied behind his back. Right. So what you got to do is free all the Iraqi prisoners. <laughs> oh. Meanwhile, former members of the 9-11 Commission say the U.S. is unprepared for another major terrorist attack. Absolutely. In a final follow-up report, panel members said the Bush administration and Congress have failed to take necessary steps on a variety of fronts. The panel well, chairman, the Thomas Kane, said it is a scandal that big city police and fire departments still can't talk to each other reliably. You know, Gilbert, you haven't gotten into political humor like Bill Maher yet. Are you, are you making any plans to get political at all? You never talk politics? No one knows. Are you a Democrat or a Republican? <laughs> Do you even know? You don't know. I should get my own show like Bill Maher. Yeah, yeah I would watch that. Oh, Bush today <laughs> he announced he's going into Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> All upset. He's like a Will Rogers or something. Yes. <laughs> They're escalating the war. <laughs> <laughs> Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice says the Condoleezza Rice <laughs> would work <laughs> to rectify <laughs> any mistakes. If the U.S. has made any in the oh, war if, on if America <laughs> has made any mistake, <laughs> she is in Berlin. Oh, oh she's in Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> and Rice also defended U.S. methods. She defended. I'm doing quotation marks. In the terror war, <laughs> D1. Are you a fan of Bill Maher? Is that your? <laughs> Be very conscious of frequent hand washing during the That's day. Uh, D1. That's D1. It can't be. Who are you looking for? Excuse Condoleezza me. Rice. That's the, she, she had a sex change. <laughs> there is no Condoleezza Rice. Are you serious? Here it is now. Excuse me. We are doing all that we can to protect our populations from uh, the threats of those who would wantonly kill innocents. Uh, but we must do this within the context of... 
any confidence in her? I don't know why I don't. She I've... seems to charm everybody who meets her. All right, that's good. I don't really, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't know anything really about her. I don't really get a sense of her at all. Yeah. But when she first took over as Secretary of State, everybody, every head of state that she met seemed to be charmed to the very gills by her. That's why I, that's why I pointed Condi. <laughs> <laughs> Condi and Brownie all here. Scooter. Scooter's here. Brownie. Condi. <laughs> If things were better, I could have gotten a white woman in this job. <laughs> I looked all over. Every white woman turned me down for the job. Well, I'm so glad that the president was reelected since everything's going so well. Valerie Plame. I, I had to hire a nigger for oh, this job. Oh, my go God. Why you use the N word? Yes. Why would you do that? Why would you say that? I have to, I have to, uh, have to chastise you. Oh, yeah. Stop it. I know you're trying to paint the president as a racist, but your humor is going to be taken the wrong way. I, 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 I right, stop. It. Go ahead. Yes, Robin. <laughs> yes, Robin. It stops being funny and just gets mean. Exactly. The N word doesn't have to. You don't have to go there with that. Right. Valerie Plame is reportedly planning to part ways with the CIA. I thought it just started getting funny. <laughs> <laughs> on Friday, two and a half years after she was publicly outed as an agent and operative of the Central Intelligence she was Agency outed. by Robert Novak. <laughs> by Robert Novak. <laughs> do you, you don't like when comedians go into the political area, do you? Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that offends you, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Does anything offend you? In a word, you? yes. <laughs> yes. Also in the news, it is flu season. See, when you got the flu, <laughs> you should put a cold compress on your head and take aspirin. Well, the <laughs> fun is political. leading up to the season has been where to get a flu shot. There are other things that you can do. How do you avoid the flu? Dr. John Shanley at the University of Connecticut Health Center says it's as simple as washing your hands oh, no. frequently. I only wash my hands 9 million times a day. Now it's going to be 90 million times a day. Be very conscious of frequent hand washing during the day. Oh. Um, this has been shown to really cut down. Yeah, that's easy to do. On transmission tremendously. So it's sort of a combination of respiratory etiquette and being conscious that you can carry uh, infections just by uh, touching things. Are you a germ phobe? Do you wash your hands all day? All right, forget it. See, if uh, they fatten the germs up as big as me, you could just see them coming from ten blocks away and not go near them. Anything else, Robin? Sanitizers and hand wipes also help. So if you can't be near what? soap and water, yeah. you can use that hand sanitizer. Yeah. It's hard in New York to be near soap and water. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll carry my hand sanitizer. <laughs> Ford Motor Company executives say they have not reached a secret deal with the American Family Association to pull advertising out of gay-oriented magazines. The car maker is pulling its Jaguar and Land Rover advertising out of those publications, but Ford says that was not the result of a deal to stop hmm. a threatened boycott by the American Family Association. Hey, oh. <laughs> Give me a reach around here. <laughs> now imagine this. You're on a plane. Friend is a pilot, right? Right. So you're on a small plane because he wants to take you for a little joy ride. And then he has a stroke while oh, at the controls. It's my worst nightmare. And you're up in the air. What do you do? Suffered a stroke, lost consciousness while taking several of his friends on a joy ride. One of the pilot's friends was able to bring him back to consciousness long enough for a very rough landing on an open field, but not before they all experienced the oh, frightening geez. nose dive. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's name was Terry Cox. He pulled out of the dive and managed to circle an airfield twice before the hard landing. The pilot is now in intensive care, and nobody aboard the plane was hurt. Oh, my goodness. It's that Jackie laugh in inappropriate place. It gets, it gets everyone. Oh, my goodness. It's open Do a season. horrible story, Robin, yeah. for a second. Well, let me see if I can find another one. One bad story. A horrible, horrible tragedy. I don't know if I have 
Because this would kill Gilbert. More yeah. tragedies. <laughs> <laughs> repeat a tragic uh, story. Repeat a tragedy. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, wait a minute. Let me see. A Kansas professor at the center of the state's creationist controversy has been badly beaten. Oh. <laughs> 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 Douglas County investigators are trying to find out who is responsible for the vicious attack. <laughs> <laughs> the All professor right. was pulled from his car and suffered a broken tooth and numerous cuts and bruises. <laughs> so the professor <laughs> was dragged and beaten and, and lost his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. And for the second time in 35 years, it's open season on uh, Black Bear in, uh, <laughs> in New Jersey. Right. So bears are being killed. The, 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 the I've hunters, been shot at twice. <laughs> Who's that, Artie? Yeah. The hunters have... Uh, I can't go through Jersey. ...been given... <laughs> I have to close, stay inside and close my cart. <laughs> given permission to go out and kill the bear. A number of activists have <laughs> taken to the woods protesting the hunt, which allows oh. hunters to kill the bear in only three... <laughs> Fire! <laughs> of the state. Oh. <laughs> the organization which displays a life-size nativity scene in Michigan <laughs> is asking for the return of the baby Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Someone stole. <laughs> $9,000 scene outside the Huron Township Fifth Third Bank All right. in Michigan. Hey, Robin. And now they want the baby Jesus returned. Gary the retard just bought Gilbert's DVD. He wants to say something. Okay. All right, Gary, go ahead. Good morning, Howard. Good morning, Gary. <laughs> Good to hear you, boys. All right, you bought Gilbert's DVD? You know what? I bought Gilbert Gilbert's CD, and that sucks. You know what? <laughs> I want my money back. You want your money back. <laughs> <laughs> I want my money back. It sucks. If, uh, if a, a retarded gentleman wants his money back, is there any chance he could get it back? I want my money back. How much did it cost you? Cost me big two bucks. I want my money back. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Gary, are we going to see you down here on the 16th for the big uh, goodbye show? <laughs> All right, uh, Gary will talk to you later. All right, go ahead, Ron. Yes, lawyers for Jenner, uh, Jennifer Aniston have sued a celebrity photographer for snapping racy pictures of her while she was topless I could care less. or partially clothed. Whip out oh, those boobs. Boy. The lawsuit yeah. says Peter Brandt used a high-power telephoto lens to take the photos. Yeah. The litigation cited by the Los Angeles Times alleges Brandt violated California's Brandt. privacy law and seeks to bar him from selling or using the pictures. Boy, there's nothing funny about someone sunbathing nude in their backyard and to have be so violated. It's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they were sunbathing nude <laughs> in their backyard. <laughs> George Clooney has a movie out called Syriana. Syriana. Uh, <laughs> here's why he drives an electric car. A1. I figured, you know, I can't do a film about oil corruption and consumption and drive a Bronco. Oh, what a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> so for the movie, he switched cars. What a cool dude. And he was also asked how he felt about not being chosen as People Magazine's sexiest man alive this year. A2. I was a little hurt that I, you know, pretty boy McConaughey now takes over. But I'm sure that, you know, it's a big responsibility. It's a heavy crown for him. Uh, isn't he great? He goes with every question. <laughs> There's no throwing that guy. <laughs> well, yeah, how nice. You know, at least you're in the running yes. to be the sexiest man yes. alive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do think that People Magazine sort of oh. missed the mark this year, though, with uh, Matthew McConaughey. I don't think he's the sexiest man alive. Who do you think is? Gilbert? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's so pack. political. How could they miss Gilbert? <laughs> Anything else, Robin? Matt Kevin Federline. <laughs> also drives a hybrid car, A3. This makes seems to make common sense to me. I mean, my father drives one, my brother drives one. You know, they're like everybody's such a good person. <laughs> he drives an electric car, <laughs> and that's what's happening. Did you go to your prom? 
Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like you had a <laughs> Now, wouldn't it have been a surprise if he said yes? See Vava Vui's final appearance at Al's Diamond Cabaret this Friday in Reading, Pennsylvania. Go over and say hi to Fafa Flow Fly. <laughs> and also, um, Gilbert Godfrey's new DVD, Gilbert Godfrey Dirty Jokes, is available in stores now. He really needs you to buy this. Yeah, Gilbert's a funny guy. Come on. Yeah. And Gilbert will be signing copies of his DVD Friday at 5 p.m. at Tower Records in Manhattan. We understand that signed copies are worth more. Yeah, the, uh... <laughs> For more information, go to GilbertGodfrey.com. Did you ever have a birthday party? Did anybody ever throw you a birthday party? No. 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 <laughs> and Gilbert will be Caroline's on Broadway in Manhattan December 22nd through the 24th. I, I imagine the other kids wouldn't come to your birthday party. <laughs> For ticket reservations, call 212-757-4100.